لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وزد وأنعم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد يقول رب العزة والجلال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون We start as always by expressing gratitude that belongs to Allah. And so we are grateful for it. We are grateful to Him. We ask His help and His assistance because you and I, we are useless on our own. And we ask Allah to guide us because whoever He guides, none can lead astray. And whoever He causes to lead astray because of their own intentions, then none can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was His last and final messenger. After whom nobody will come with the same care and affection that he came. With the same teachings that he came. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah says in the Quran, O you claim belief, have fear of Allah as he deserves to be feared and do not die except on a state of iman. The past five to six weeks, you have been hearing constantly and continuously about Hajj, about Ibrahim, about the Qurbani, about sacrifice, about obedience. And so when I was thinking of this khutbah, I was struggling to come up with a unique angle, with a different way to look at it, something new to talk about in the same theme. And for some inspiration, I opened up Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah talks about the story of Ibrahim when he first, he left his wife and his son in the barren desert. And the first supplication he makes, the first dua he makes, I realize it is a dua we have not discussed yet. And it is a dua we do not discuss. And this dua is وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا When Ibrahim says, O oh Allah, make this a safe country. Before he asks for prayer, before he asks Allah to give his children provision, before he asks Allah to make his children prophets, the first prayer, the first request from to Allah is, make this a safe place. And once you have made this a safe place to live in, please give the people who live in this place provision, food and drink. Because once the place is safe and they have food in their bellies and energy in their bodies, then they can worship you. Then after that, Ibrahim asks Allah, رَبَّنَا جَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً Make us Muslims and those after us Muslims. So he asks Allah to make his people, his children Muslims, but first he asks Allah for safety and for food. Now why does he do that? Here is one, there is one more interesting question to ask. One ayah before this, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا We made this house, the Kaaba, a place where people will come to, and we made it safe. So Allah guaranteed that the Kaaba will be a safe place, a sacred place. Then why does Ibrahim still ask Allah for safety? If Allah has told him, I have given this place a safe, sacred reputation, why does Ibrahim have to still ask him, Allah make it a safe place? Why? Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, the great exegete of the Quran, he says the reason is, Allah made it safe, but Ibrahim asked Allah to continue making it safe. When you came to this country, or your grandparents came to this country, they came here because of stability, because of financial stability. But will this country remain stable? When people immigrated to the USA hundreds of years ago, Muslims, they immigrated there with the idea that this place is this financial stability, this American dream. 
We can live here, we don't need to worry about food and drink. But did it remain stable? We are seeing in front of our own eyes, it's not remaining stable, right? The type of people that are being elected into power. So Ibrahim's dua is don't, not just, Alhamdulillah, I'm in a safe country. Allah, make it safe, continue forever. And Allah, give my children food and give me food. And then he asks Allah, give us salah and zakah and taqwa. We see today in the world around us increasingly that Muslim countries are unsafe by itself. Starting with Iraq. Iraq was the world's center of trade, of commerce, of knowledge. Iraq was a world superpower. And today Iraq is dust and ruin. If you have any Iraqi friends, ask them how their family is. You will see tears in their eyes. Because most of their family is dead and buried under ruins. You see amazing and family names with legacies in Iraq. Al-Tantawi, Al-Aradi, these are big families in Iraq. They only have two or three people left in the world. Iraq was destroyed. Libya was destroyed. Syria was destroyed. I used to have a teacher in the UAE, Sheikh Abdul Basif al arkani He was one of the most knowledgeable men in the UAE. People would come from abroad and they would come and they would kiss his hands because of how much knowledge he had and the way he conducted himself. And this man, Sheikh Abdul Basit, people would come and they would ask him, where are you from? And he would say, and I'm in Burma, I'm from Burma. They'd say, Burma? Wa aina that? Where is Burma? He said, Sahih and aina that. He said, you are right, where is it? Sheikh Abdul Basit, he used to tell me sad stories that he came from a place called Burma. Now it's called Myanmar. It's frequently in the news. And this place, it was one million Muslims still there today, there are one million Muslims. But they are a minority, the majority are Buddhists. Violent, <coughs> aggressive Buddhists. This one million Muslims, they are descendants of Arab traders, Muslims, hundreds of years ago. But the country, Burma, Myanmar, had not given them a passport, had not given them citizenship. So these people are stateless, they have no belongings. Nowhere to belong, nowhere to come. Next door is Bangladesh. Many of them try to go to Bangladesh, but they are returned back. Nearby is Pakistan. They try to go there, but they are returned back. These people live on earth a life of misery and hell on earth. And why? They are Muslims. They are good people. Today, till today, they are Muslims. But what? They don't have safety. They do not have safety. And when you do not have safety, you cannot worship Allah. When you do not have safety, you cannot do anything, you cannot build anything, you cannot study. Don't we see in small examples, for example in schools. You know children that are struggling in schools and education. You try to investigate why they're struggling, you see they're being bullied. They're scared, they're in fear. So they cannot focus on their studies. The same way, if we are in fear, if we are scared, how will we worship Allah? How will we build our akhirah? And how will we build this dunya? How will we make friends with people? How will we trade? How will we study? How will we work? If we are always scared. This week, 100,000 people in the Rohingya part of Myanmar, of Burma have died. Muslims. Because the army, the, the, the army of the country of Burma are after them trying to kill them. The villages are being burned. These people are running away. They are dying. Nobody knows about them. This week, we had threats in Bradford of the EDL coming in, you know, scaring Muslims with acid attacks and things like that. And more often in London, we've seen over 30 acid attacks in the last month alone. Muslim women are scared to leave their houses. Muslim men don't want to go out because they're scared if they wear their topi or if they have a beard, somebody will do something to them. This, is, this isn't life. This is not how to live a life. This is living life in fear. And so the most important dua to make in times like this is the first dua of Ibrahim. Allahumma ja'al hadha baladan amina. Oh Allah, make this a safe country. Even though Allah told him, guaranteed him, this is Mecca, this will be a safe country. He still said, Allah, make it a safe country. Then what happens? Ibrahim then asks Allah, وَرَزُقَ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَهُ 
whoever is a believer in this place, Mecca, please provide them with food, with, with progress. He said only those who are believers. He didn't include the disbelievers in his dua. Ibn Abbas, عنه, the Prophet's companion, said, Arada Ibrahim, Ibrahim in his dua, he only asked Allah to bless Muslims with progress. But Allah replied to Ibrahim, Qala, wa man kafara, even those who disbelieve, I will provide for them. If you even ask me, provide only for the Muslims, no, I will even provide for the disbelievers. Because Allah's guarantee is not only that the Muslims are safe, that everybody is safe. The Prophet said, Man qatala mu'ahidan lam yashum jannah. In a Muslim country, if someone kills a non-Muslim, that person will not smell jannah. Will not smell jannah. Sometimes we get the idea people are attacking us, people are doing, we should retaliate. The Prophet ﷺ, whoever harms, kills an Muslim will not smell jannah. Forget entering jannah. And Allah has guaranteed his rizq even for the non muslims That's why sometimes when we are attacked, we get too defensive, we have to be careful of our words. Ibn Abbas in his narration, he says that Allah said, أَأَخْلُقُ خَلْقًا لَا أَرْزُقُهُ how can I create a human being that I do not provide for? How can I create a human being that I do not provide for? As Sha'rawi in his tafsir of this ayah says, Hal as shams, does the sun only give light to Muslims? La wallah. He said, No. The sun, when it gives light, it gives light to everybody. Allah did not create this world only for Muslims, He created it for everybody. So in our hearts, when we think, Oh, we are being attacked, we should not attack them. Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَتَسْمَعُنَّ You will definitely hear مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ From those who have been given the book before you, the Christians and the Jews. And those who have disbelieved, أَذَنْ كَثِيرًا They will harm you, they will hurt you. وَلَئِنْ تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا But if you have patience and you have fear of Allah, that is the way to go. In these times of fear, the first thing to ask Allah is of safety. Of safety in this world and of safety in the akhirah. If you are a leader of a family, you have children, it is your responsibility to make sure your children and your family are safe. If you are a mother, it is your duty to make sure your children are safe. And not just safe physically and in terms of their, their well-being, but safe from shirk, safe from sin, safe from disobeying Allah. Because very much in this time, we see influences creeping in. When we are scared, so we tell our sisters and our mothers, don't wear niqab, we don't want something to happen to you. We tell our brothers, don't wear a thobe, shave your beard. And we compromise on our values more and more until we look like Joe and John and John looks like us and you cannot tell the difference. Don't name yourself Yahya, Muhammad, name Harith, they can call him Harith. Nobody will see the difference. This is us compromising on our values. We're trying to blend in, we're trying to be hidden. And this is not the way, this is fear. But when we are scared, we should not behave this way. We should stay firm. Allah says in the Quran, And O Muhammad, if we had not made you firm, you would have kneeled, you would have, you know, you would have angled toward them, inclined toward them, you would have started behaving like them, you would have started doing what they asked you to do. But we made you firm, so we did not. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المسلم الحمد لله على إنعامه وشكر له لتفضله وامتنانه وسبحان الله والحمد لله تعظيما من شأنه When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم We all know of the early days in Mecca when he was constantly under torture in times like this, we should remember that the fear we are feeling is little in comparison to the, the fear that the Muslims felt in the beginning, the early times of Muslims. Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he collected this hadith in the Sahih. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayf, a disbeliever at the time, he saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prostrating in front of the Kaaba praying salah. So he came up to him and he put his foot on his neck and he strangled him. The hadith says, Khalqan Shadid, and strangled him hard. 
He pressed hard and he wanted to see his pain. And the man writing this hadith says, وَمَا أُغْنِي عَنْهُ شَيْئًا I could not do anything to help the Prophet I was helpless. The men at that time, there were dozens of them and I was alone, I couldn't help the Prophet. Until Abu Bakr came and he pushed them away and he took the Prophet aside and he said to them, يَا مَعْشَرَ Quraysh, O Quraysh, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ As Allah says in the Quran, do you fight someone just because they said Allah is my Lord? Do you fight them solely because of their religion? وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And he came to you with clear proof from your Lord. فَإِنْ يَكُوْ كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كَذِبُهُ If he is a liar, then let him be a liar. وَإِنْ يَكُوْ صَادِقًا يُصِبْكُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ But if he is truthful, then what he is promising you will come true. He's reminding the Quran. Fight him. Hit him if you want. But watch out. If he's speaking the truth, you are in trouble. This is the way of them. This is the way they held, they had sabr. They didn't say, the Prophet ﷺ didn't say, Oh, they are strangling me, they hit me, I won't pray salah again. No, he continued. He went there every day. He put his head down on the floor every day. In some narrations, they took a pile of dung, of cow dung, and they put lumped it on the Prophet's neck while he was in sujood. Ibn Mas'ud narrates this hadith and he says, I couldn't do anything to help him. And then his daughter Fatima came and she moved it aside and she picked him up. <laughs> so this is how they had sabr. This is how they had sabr. Yet at the same time, there were people who took precaution, who were careful. When the Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, now we know Medina is a place that was safe, that was a Muslim land for them. It was a safe place for them. And yet in Medina, even after he went to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ has narrated, that he would say before he went to sleep, لَيْتَ رَجُلًا صَالِحًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ يَحْرِسُ هَذِهِ اللَّيْلَةِ Who amongst my companions can protect me tonight? Stand guard outside my house. He was in a Muslim land. He was safe. But he still took the precaution. Because not taking a precaution is stupidity. And so in times of danger, in times where there's difficulty, in times where there's threat, we should still take precaution. We should still be careful. And lastly, in times of difficulty, in times where there's threat, where we are scared, where we have Muslim relatives in other countries in the world who are under threat, who are scared, our best thing to do when our hands are tied is dua. The Prophet وسلم, the narrator Abu Dawood, have entered a mosque, a masjid, and he found in this mosque a young man with his head in his hands. And he said, Malaka fi waqtin ghayri waqti salah. How come you are in the mosque now and it's not a time for salah? What are you doing? So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, Prophet of God, Humumun lazamatni, waduyunun rakabatni. My concerns, my worries have overwhelmed me. And my loans, the loans, my financial troubles have overtook me. So this man, he's not just worried, concerned about other issues, but also financially. And you and I know, we both know how difficult financial troubles are. The Prophet sits next to him. He said, why don't I tell you something that will remove your concerns and will fix up all your financial troubles? And then he taught him a dua, a supplication. He taught him, ask Allah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan. Allah, I ask you to protect me from worry and from sadness. Wal jubni wal bukhl, wal ajzi wal kasr. And I ask Allah, protect me from being useless. I ask you to protect me from being lazy, from being scared. And then from the effects of loans, وَغَلَبَتِ الرِّجَالِ And I ask you to protect me from men who will overpower me, overtake me. So when you are overtaken, when you are overpowered, who should you turn to but Allah? You know what the Prophet ﷺ, in this hadith, before he would sleep, he would ask one sahabi, one companion to protect him, to stand outside with his weapons ready. However, one night Allah revealed to the Prophet, وَاللَّهُ يَعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ Allah will protect you from everything. He came out that night وسلم, and he said, he said to his companion who was standing at the door with his weapon, I don't need you, go away tonight. Allah has promised me he will protect me from everything. Allah. And so maybe you and I are not, we're not under threat, we are happy, we are comfortable. Maybe all this talk is not directed to you and I. In that case, 
this safety that we live in is a big blessing we have to thank Allah for. And when we don't thank Allah for it, what will happen? Allah will take it away. Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُ On the day of Uhud, the battle of Uhud, people came to the Prophet and they said, people have gathered against you, be scared. What did Allah say in the Quran? فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا But instead of being scared, the Iman rose and they said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is enough for me and be with And we know from the story of Saba, the Queen of Sheba, that people, Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي سَبَئٍ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ And then what happened? They denied Allah's Prophet. They disbelieved. فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ They were ungrateful for what Allah gave them. فَأَذَاقَهَ اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah made them hungry and scared because they never thanked Him for what they had. May Allah protect us from, from that. May Allah make us of those who thank Allah. اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا سخاء رخاء دار عدل وإحسان Allah make this country safe for us for the children who come after us and for us in this day not just safe to earn our work but safe for us to pray on the streets Allah make us of those who turn to you with taqwa and with iman Allah give us sabr like you gave the early Muslims Allah make us take whatever we get and make us stay firm on our faith Allah forgive us because we have been weak Oh Allah, forgive us because we do not thank you enough. Oh Allah, make us grateful for our blessings. Oh Allah, maj'alna muslimin, waj'alna muttaqeen, waj'alna mukhlisin. Wa akhiru da'wana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa aqim salam.